Welcome to the video. If you're new here, my name is Chris and I build productivity apps. And a common question I get in my comments and in the DMs is how did I come up with these ideas and how do I choose what to work on? So I thought I'd make a quick video for anyone who's struggling to come up with ideas or if you have a ton of ideas and you're not sure what to work on, this is the video for you. I'm gonna give you guys some real life examples from my own apps and I'm gonna try to make this video as actionable as possible. I will say that my advice slightly changes depending on the goals that you have. Some people want to build a billion dollar company and raise a bunch of money and then other people just want to get better as a developer. So depending on your goals, my answer slightly changes and I'll be covering a wide range of these goals in this video. Let me start by sharing some of my goals just so you guys have that context. Most people have some sort of monetary goal and to an extent that's true, I do have a little bit of a monetary goal. Like I would love to just be able to make some revenue from my apps, but my ultimate goal is to get better as a developer. If you've seen any of my videos on my channel, you probably know that that's true. Most of the decisions I make and the problems that I tackle are for me to get better in some sort of way. So let's start with that goal in mind. Anyone has a goal similar to me where they want to get better as a developer, or if you just wanna get started as a developer and you don't have much experience, here's how I would approach it and here's my advice. First, I would specifically choose problems that you're actually passionate about. That sounds really simple in theory, but I will say that that a lot of people that I've given this advice to have actually struggled a lot with that, mainly because of what I call shiny object syndrome. When you're online, like you're seeing people posting on Twitter or on TikTok, a lot of them are chasing very interesting problems or building things on type of hyped up technologies like AI or crypto. And it's very common to want to build something in that area. Just because it's a shiny object, you kind of want to chase that. And what ends up happening is you pick problems with very shiny solutions like AI, but they're not actually interesting to you. And then you kind of get burnt out and give up midway through. But if you build with your pain points in mind, then you are the first customer and you have a way higher chance of actually following through with it. So that's advice number one, pick a problem that you're genuinely interested in solving. Let's take a look at one of my apps, Mogul, which is an app I never talk about on this channel, which I probably should. Mogul is a personal CRM app. And for those that don't know what a personal CRM app is, it's basically a way for you to manage and track relationships, like interactions and details about people. A lot of people don't know this, but in college, I was actually gonna go into finance and consulting. When when you're in that industry, there's a ton of networking that you gotta do. So I was networking with a lot of recruiters and a lot of people at big companies. I needed a way to track those relationships and those interactions. And so I was using a Google Sheet at the time and it kind of worked, but it was really unenjoyable to use on my phone. And I was meeting like one or two people a day. So this was a pretty high friction pain point for me. The first version of Mogul was a Google Sheets API wrapper that I built in Swift just so I can access that Google Sheet and make it look really nice. There was no database, there was no signups, just a very simple application that only I could use to easily add things to Google Sheets. And then from there, I kind of just iterated and then it became the mogul that you see today. It just started as a Google Sheets wrapper to solve my pain point. And my other apps, Ellie and Luna, also started in a very similar way. There was a specific pain point in my life that I needed to solve and I created these applications to solve that one pain point just for myself and then it kind of took off from there. And that goes into my second piece of advice to keep the scope as small as possible. And the reason for that is very similar to the first reason. It's so that it's manageable and you have a way higher chance of not burning out and following through with it. So looking at Mogul again, I didn't set out to build the Mogul that you see today with reminders, Apple contacts integrations, none of that. The scope was literally, can I build this so I can have an easier time inputting things on my phone? Really simple scope. The database and everything, that came months later once other people started asking if they could use it too. So that's my second piece of advice. Keep it as small as you possibly can and then expand as necessary. Necessary. Okay, so let's say that you're having trouble finding pain points. My advice is actually to start practicing finding pain points. Some people naturally are very good at finding pain points. For a lot of people, you actually have to practice and really improve on that skill because it is a skill being able to identify these things. Here's what I would do if you feel like you're not good at this and you wanna practice. I would look at all the apps that you use on a daily basis or even physical devices, to be honest. Just look at things you use on a daily basis and consciously think, I could improve anything here. Like if I was in contact with the developers or the designers, designers for this thing, how would I change the workflow? How would I improve it? I am 99% sure that everyone can come up with at least one or two things in all the applications that they use that they would improve on. And it could be something like, oh, I really wish this button was moved over here, or I wish that they had a whole other feature. If you keep practicing this and you're very intentional about it, you will start getting good at it. And then ideas are no longer the bottleneck anymore. You're gonna have too many ideas, and then you're gonna have to figure out how do you choose what to work on. So again, these things are really good if your goal is to learn and get better 
better as a developer, like my goal is. Let's talk a little bit about monetary goals. If your goal is to build up a side hustle, and we're talking like one to $2,000 a month of income, my advice is to still solve problems that you personally face. And again, the reason is so you don't get burnt out and you actually follow through. If you're facing a problem like this, there is a very high chance that there's other people that are facing this problem. And it actually doesn't take that many users to build a product that generates one to $2,000 a month. I know a lot of people who have made very niche tools that focus on a problem for a very small subset of people that make like five to $10,000 a month. I think the important part is to follow through and actually get that product to market and start trying to get it in front of those people whose problem you're actually solving. So one to $2,000 a month, you can take that same advice that I was giving. If you wanna go a little bit higher to five to $10,000 a month where this is a more serious side project or even now just a lifestyle business, my advice changes slightly. I would still focus on pain points that you're interested in, again, so you're not burnt out. Focus on talking to users and figuring out, is there enough people like you that also have that same pain point? For like 10K a month, you're gonna need a little bit bigger of a market segment to be able to do that. In my opinion, most projects can attain this even with very small niches. But to make your life easier, I still would confirm how hard of a job is marketing and getting in front of these people before you jump into any of those ideas. If you wanna target a more serious business with really high revenue, $1 million a year, and you want a lot of employees, this is the territory where I actually recommend doing a lot more research and you're probably gonna have to solve problems for other people. My advice is to talk to users and you're not gonna only have to confirm that there's enough people with the problem, but more importantly, that there is a very high intent to pay. And a lot of the times when you're in that territory of revenue, these people that are willing to pay are probably businesses. That's why when you see a lot of apps that make over a million dollars a year, most of them are in the B2B space. They focus it on businesses and not on consumers. So my advice is to talk to users, research a lot, really confirm that there is a market, there's a high intent to pay before you jump into the problem. But again, this is only if your goal is specifically to make a ton of money and build like a really serious business. But if you're okay with something smaller or a lifestyle business, you can definitely just focus on your own pain points. But I would still do some research to figure out how big is this market? How much work is it gonna be? Is it worth it for you to get into if you have a specific monetary goal in mind? A lot of that advice is more on prioritization, how to figure out which project to pursue. If you're still struggling to figure out some ideas, even looking at your own life and your own pain points, here's some more things that I would try. First, which I think is the easiest, is to study existing companies, especially very big companies and tools. Can you build a similar tool, maybe taking one or two of their features, but do it 10 times better and focus on a subset of their user base? They're making $10 billion and you take a tiny sliver, easily that could be like five to $10,000 a month. So here's an example where this kind of happened for my app Mogul, which again is a personal CRM app. A lot of the apps in the space that my users were using before, huge CRMs like Salesforce and HubSpot, and these are billion dollar companies. A lot of companies use them to power their sales and business and manage their customer relationships. There's a small niche of users who are actually using these tools for personal use. And they're not built for personal use, they're built for businesses and sales. So as I was working on Mogul, I kind of noticed this and I was like, I obviously can't compete with HubSpot and Salesforce, but maybe if I focused on the personal side, things and integrations that they would never do, like Apple Contacts, for example. And that's actually what ended up happening and that's what Mogul has become. Even though I have one one hundredth of the features, I have the right set of features. It is so much better as a niche personal CRM for them. So that's advice number one is look at existing incumbents, especially billion dollar companies, figure out are there one or two features that I can maybe take and build upon or is there a niche audience that are using it in a way that it wasn't intended to and can I make a more specific version that does it way better than the current tool. Very interesting way to get ideas and the market is semi-validated by doing this. The second way is to look at communities like Reddit and other forums. They are a gold mine for ideas because a lot of people use those forums to complain about existing products and problems or look for alternatives. Another more personal example is for my budgeting app Luna, I actually go on the subreddits of a lot of other budgeting apps to see what are users complaining about. And a couple things that I saw and noticed which really influenced the decision of my app, a lot of these apps have very poor international support. They either just didn't support a lot of the currencies or if they did, there were usually some issues like their UI wasn't built to support nine digits, which actually is very common in a lot of countries. So after reading that, I got inspired and that's why I'm going the extra mile to do international support. But I only got these ideas by looking at these communities and reading their pain points. So that's advice number two, find these communities because it's a gold mine for pain points and friction that users are having with existing solutions. So many great ideas out there. The final piece of advice that I have, it's a little bit more general advice, but it's something that I wish someone told me early on. It's completely fine 
to work on very simple ideas or to work on things that are just a micro improvement on something that already exists. I think too many people get deterred because they feel like that's the easy way out and that's a huge waste of time. They should be focused on something massive. But in my experience, building is building. If you're taking the time to build something that improves the lives of other people and you're putting it out there in the world, that's a huge win in my book. I mean, if you take a look at all my apps, none of them are new ideas. Mogul, personal CRM app, that has been done so many times. So many businesses have failed trying to pursue this. Ellie, daily planning app. There's so many to-do lists and daily planning apps out there. And then Luna's a budgeting app. There's like a new budgeting app coming out every single day. None of these apps are actually unique world-changing ideas. People still use them for one reason or the other, but most of the time they use it because it works better than the existing solutions for their workflow. You might be surprised that other people would also switch to your app because it fits their workflow a little bit better. Billions of people in the world, a lot of them have different workflows. There's a very high chance that it would resonate with other people. I feel like I'm rambling at this point, but never feel like your idea is too small. To summarize my advice, no matter what goals you have, focus on problems you're genuinely interested in solving because you'll have a higher chance of following through with it and maintaining momentum. And then keep the scope as small as possible for as long as possible, and then just expand as needed. If you have some monetary goals in mind, you're gonna have to do a little bit more research to figure out, is there a market and what is their intent to pay? Once you do that, you'll quickly figure out, am I gonna reach my goals with this idea? But if the goal is to learn and to self-improve, there is no idea that is too small. I don't know why I chose to film at this time. This light is so bright. But I hope this was helpful. And if you guys found this interesting, check out my Instagram and TikTok. I post almost every other day about building productivity apps. And obviously, if you like this kind of content, don't forget to subscribe. If there's any other questions or any other topics you want me to cover, feel free to comment below or DM me. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch. And I'll see you guys in the next video.